COVID-19, why you do this to me? I really don't like being stuck in quarantine. I have no toilet paper, I don't even have a snack. Hey, coronavirus, I want my life back. Good evening, isolators. I was contemplating there doing the Robin Williams good evening, isolators, but then I chose not to. I'm glad I did. Uh, beautiful, beautiful evening uh, here and uh, happy summer. The first day of summer had happened. Did anybody watch the, uh, the live feed from Stonehenge and was a little disappointed because I was expecting like something, a well-defined sun going behind the, the rocks, but it was still okay. It was still okay. Uh, my guest this evening, is a, a person who has, um, has changed direction uh, in life, and she now uh, trains hummingbirds and uh, has uh, been quite successful at it. However, has not made a lot of money at it. Uh, hello, Aaron. How are you? <laughs> training hummingbirds. Training hummingbirds. <laughs> Honestly, I'm great. How are you? It is wonderful. Show people your 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 necklace too, because it's got a hummingbird on oh, it today. Oh yes. yes, yes. This was a gift from Joyce, who is a listener, long time listener, and she gave me this beautiful little hummingbird. And uh, nice. oops, that's supposed to be muted, and I will. No, don't worry. And it's that. got a few of uh, our daughter's ashes in it, so I carry her with me, and along with another necklace that a right listener gave heart. me at a book. At a, yeah. What's this? Gave with me at a book. Okay. Every time I talk to you about something, it's because a listener gave it to you. Oh, like you don't know about freebies. Not for a few years. No. <laughs> no, it's just, it's the most wonderful thing to, to be the recipient of such kindness and, and uh, caring. And I've been blessed my entire career. I know that. Okay, we are going to get to our survey results in a few minutes. But right now, let's get to what we are grateful for today. Anything happened today to you, Aaron, that uh, yes. particularly stands out? Yes, today was a very stressful day. We're dealing with all kinds of moving pieces after the news that I told you yesterday, and maybe we'll recap that a little mm -hmm. bit. By the way, I want some video from last night's show that I can put it on my journal on Monday because that was kind of the coming out of our uh, big okay, news. Okay, yes, but, yes. Um, uh, our friends Charles and Nancy live down in Sydney by the sea, and uh, they came by today, and look what they brought me from their garden. <gasps> from their garden? These, I was going to say they stopped at a their flower garden. shop. No, and I've got it in one of my favorite Balik vases. So what is but that? Isn't that That's lovely? a lily, right? Uh, lilies and something called mallow, mallow, mallow. Um, nice. And they're just gorgeous. And it made my day. And just that somebody thought of that and was so kind to drop something off. And they're just the most wonderful friends. So that's what I'm grateful for, the kindness of strangers listeners people we don't know personally and the kindness of friends oh it is oh it is i've always been thankful for the kindness of strangers what's the line i've always relied uh, on the i've always relied on the kindness i've of strangers. always i have always relied on the kindness of strangers and is that uh, like, streetcar a streetcar named yes, desire i is. think yeah. look at us yeah. up yes. on our Broadway uh, musicals. Tennessee Williams. There yes. you go. I love that. Uh, grateful for having a doctor for 40 years as he retires today. <gasps> wow. Oh, what a time to retire. 40 it's like, I'm out years? Of here. Was that Marcus Welby? <laughs> That's or, right. Or Dr. Kyle. I'd go Kylie. for George Clooney. <laughs> uh, grateful for Dave. Uh, I would say grateful for two boys uh, who are the best dads. Happy Father's Day, Kevin. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, and happy uh, early Father's Day to everyone out there. I know that um, right now your 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 dad is you're wishing a happy Father's Day, but you you want to talk about something that you wish would you could be grateful for. Yeah, I mean, my dad is uh, he just on the eleventh turned eighty seven years old. Oh, bless and him. yeah, absolutely. And he's still got a great sense of humor, and he's still our fun, wonderful, loving dad. And it's kind of funny, as he gets a little older, he's mushier on the phone, which is kind of neat. He's in Kelowna, I'm on the island in Victoria, and I have two sisters in Kelowna and one who lives uh, out of the country. So um, dad fell a couple of weeks ago and he had his hands full and he really took it. He he was all bruised and no broken bones, but some, some bruises and, and scrapes and scraped his knees really badly. And as we found out later, as in a couple of days ago, he got a concussion. So oh. 
Dad, yeah, Dad was um, Dad's short-term memory is starting to to fade as it does, you know, when you hit forty. But, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but but he he also the next day was nabbed because he went out in his car to the grocery store for his girlfriend. My mom passed away about uh, seven or eight years ago, and he was going to the store for Sweet Donna and got nabbed on the way home because they saw his bag. Meantime, he's been driving, he's been leaving, he's been running off and going to the car dealership and this and that when he's not supposed to be because they are on lockdown, right? So he got caught. Uh, he was isolated for seven days, including his birthday. And, um, you know, every day I was calling him with his uh, his prison prisoner number <laughs> as his birthday and stuff. And we were having a laugh about it. But um, he's been driving. And that's a big concern. So we're going through what a lot of people are going through now with their elderly parents. And it's a hard thing because you remember. How old were you, Kevin, when you got your driver's license? I was 16, but I had been driving. I grew up in North Bay. So, oh, there you go. I mean, there are yes. no laws. <laughs> there, there are only guidelines. So I, you know, right. I had been driving in one form or another since I was 14, but yes. Yeah. It's your first real taste of freedom. Yeah. And I'll say that as a man and, and as a woman, I was 17 when I, when I got my license. First try. Um, <laughs> were you, were you first try? Oh, first try. Well? Oh yeah. Okay. Pros. So it, it's their first taste of freedom. And now at 87, he still loves to drive and that freedom may be taken from him. And, with his four daughters, it's a hard, hard thing for us to do. Now, one of my sisters impressed upon him today, okay, dad, you don't drive until this Tuesday. We called his doctor. She's having him come in for an assessment, and this could be it. But I think coming from the doctor, it may be a little easier than coming from the daughters because mm -hmm. it's it's going to be painful. But we've kind of sold him on, you know, the shuttles that they have at his residence and all the money he's going to have for taxis. What is it with seniors who won't pay for a taxi? <laughs> and and I, I despair for what they're going to tip the poor driver. But, uh, <laughs> that's right. 11.6%. Yeah. Or, right. or, or, Not even. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a familiar tune to a lot of people. Yeah, it's tough. I know when my mom... Uh, had her license, uh, it, it basically just it, it was not renewed, and, and it would not be renewed. That it was, it was, you know, she she grew older after that. You, really? you know what I mean? And, and I'm, I'm, I do. I, you know, it, it, she became older. She had lost that independence and that ability to just go anywhere she right. wanted to at a, at a moment's notice without having to ask anybody right. to do it for her. Right. And, and in a way, isolation has done this, too, I, I think, for a lot of seniors. COVID will have claimed more people than the actual disease because of the, you know, the lack of connection that so many of us are feeling. But sorry, I interrupted no, you. No, 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 no. It, it, it is just, yeah, it's one of those times. And I know it, it, it will come one day for me as well. I mean, by that time, I don't know if anybody will own cars anymore. From what I hear, oh, yeah. we're going to... We all thought we'd have flying cars. Well, I, it, from what I hear, it's all going to be self-driving cars and, and uh, yeah. Ubers and, and that. And, and you know what? When I moved to mm -hmm. Toronto two yeah. years ago now, um, I thought I would need a car. You know, I, I kept my vehicle. Right. I used it maybe once a month, maybe. Wow. So I got rid of it. Wow. Oh, Molly's at the door. Rob, just a second. Rob's got his headphones on. Molly's at the door. That's her <laughs> dog. She's 15 and a half. And when she barks, she has to go. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. She was over there somewhere. I don't know. She's, she's quite a character. <laughs> Speaking of taking care of, of elderly, it's it's another thing, right? It's a joy to take care of an elderly pet, but uh, we're always on standby. Do you have a pet there in your condo? Uh, his name is Parker, yes. You yeah. should see his hair. Is he trained? He sheds all over the place. Uh, all sheds. over the place, Got yeah. It? Okay, oh, yeah, my yeah, gosh, yeah. yeah. Parker, by the way, and I said this before we went on, and I'll say it again for everybody. Your son is doing a fantastic job producing this oh, yeah. show. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, and I know he's making the same money you are on this, yes. which is, <laughs> but uh, no, he really is. So we both let's love hear it. it. Yeah. Let's hear it for the enablers. Yeah. Yes. Nice work, yeah. Parker. He, he loves it as much as I do and, and uh, looks forward oh, to it. God help you know? him. God help him. Uh, that's a lot to ask of somebody, right? Uh, you know, to, to do this for 92, 92 straight days. Can we talk about this, Kevin? Because I just cut my journal back from five days a week yeah. to two days a week. I'm now doing it Mondays and Thursdays. And I did that last year. I came out of rehab. I was in for about a month and a half. And just to kind of get my head straight and figure, figure out 
what I needed to do to live a healthy life. And one of the things they said was, you're doing what every day? So I'm worried about you, my friend, because you're doing, and God bless you, and I know that your viewers are going, chit, chit, leave them. We love them every night. But what is this doing to your life? Can well, you look at that objectively? Do you know what? It's it's a, a, a week from tomorrow will be I, I show 100, and I've decided I'm going to call it quits then. But people are saying, well, what about if you did? five days a week or one day a week or two days a week. And that, you know, that's, I think it's much more doable. It, it is, you know what, it, for me, it's been my chance to give back. You know, it's, it's, it's what little I can do during this time to give. And right. so, but it, it is taxing. It's a lot of work to book guests and to edit and, and to, to, to make sure everything's okay. And, um, and there's no staff here, right? There's Parker. Right. Uh, but there's no staff, you know, I'm, I, I was used to working with, with, uh, you know, uh, producers. producers and, and with audio people, like look at the problems we had yesterday. Yeah. Like, right. We oh, would, look who's here. Between you and me. Hello, Molly. Hello, baby. Hello. How are you? There she is. Oh, she's <laughs> deaf. She's deaf. There How are you? Is that better? <laughs> Yes, I understand. Okay, keep going. And because so, I, I worry about you, Kevin. Well, well I mean, whenever we had problems, when you had them at CHFI and I had them at City, we would just sit there and let the, the engineers and the, the tech people take care of it. Right. Now it's just a matter of, you know, ah! that. Yeah, panic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, were, um, you were talking a little bit about um, Ricky Gervais uh, yes. a, a, a while back. Yeah, I uh, I came across this article. Have you watched Afterlife, by the way? Yes, I did. I did. I was not as enamored with it as I thought I would be. Did I not put the picture? Did I? Can you check and see if I put the tape of Ricky Gervais? Maybe it's still on the. In. Hold on. There it is. That's yeah. Okay. Hold on. There. Yeah, there we go. No, it's right you. there. It was there. Okay. Oh, he's ju he's just he's just trying to find a place to to put it. That's. <laughs> he's he's running down and grabbing the tape and putting it in the machine and pre-rolling right. it. Oh. No, he's not. He's, he's oh, actually, there man. we go. Yeah. There we go. All right. Go on as though this just, you know, actually take it off, Parker. Let's just, let's just, as though we were prepared. All right. I, anyway, I, I know you were talking <laughs> about Ricky Gervais the, the, the other day to me. Why, why Aaron? Well, the thing with Afterlife, seasons one and season two, season one looked at, like his wife dies of cancer right wow. from the jump. And, uh, wow. and, and, and he, um, he, she left him messages that he runs on his computer, and it's just so wonderful. Mm -hmm. But he, in the first season, he's decided he's going to be a total jerk and then kill himself. So he's going to, you know, he's going to just do whatever he wants because he's going to die anyway. He doesn't want to live. Then in the second season, he starts to think, well, what if I make life a little better for the people around me? And before you think it's too treacly, yeah, there are some really ripe swear words that fly yeah. in the very first five minutes from an elderly woman who uses mm -hmm. a word I won't use. And you know there are a few of those. <laughs> um, and so it's got that Gervais edge, right? So he was in this... Uh, um, interview in the big issue um, something that just came to me online and he talks about hope and how important hope is and you wouldn't think that somebody who's seemingly so jaded as Gervais is open to that idea but you know he contemplates suicide in that first season and then the second one but what he says is that I've said many times you won't hear me complain. He's talking about isolation and COVID. I don't go out socially. Usually we sit and watch telly. We're doing that. I do the hours exercise anyway, and there's always enough booze in the house for a nuclear winter. But when I see nurses doing 14-hour shifts and risking the health of themselves and their family, there are people in a lot worse situations than me. So, yeah, you won't hear me complaining. And he says people want things to be back to normal even if they didn't like what normal was. We are creatures of habit and you want the devil you know. We want our life back for better or worse, but I think people are starting to realize what's important and I never want to hear people complain about the NHS or OHIP or yeah. whatever healthcare you have. Again, I want them to remember that they were clapping the NHS every week. So, I mean, it's just, uh, when everything's back to normal and we will survive this and look back as we have other disasters and pandemics, Ricky Gervais says, I hope we can have a slightly more caring society. But the truth is, we don't know. There could be massive repercussions or it could all become a strange, distant memory. Yeah. I love 
I love uh, his take on things. I really I, do. Yeah, I know oh, he's not everybody's he's cup of no, tea. No, no, no. I just that was the only, and I was, and that's why I said I was a little disappointed because I love Ricky Gervais. I think he is brilliant. He has that ability uh, that a lot of of British comedians have, and that is he's not going always for the guaranteed laugh. Over I, here, everything is over rehearsed, and if it doesn't work, comedians will take it out of their show. Right. He just lets it fly. If you laugh, and, you laugh. And if you yeah. don't, you don't. And, and and that's what's so funny is because it's just like sitting in a room talking with someone who isn't in front of an audience. So he, he is brilliant. And he has a great take not, on things. He's not afraid to make you feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. either. That's like Hannah Gadsby. Oh, boy. She's oh, got a second special. Just ad. a oh second. I have, I have to admonish one of my viewers right now. Mike Robin says, sorry, I'm late. Where, Mike. Mike, it is 716. This, Mike, Mike, this Mike. is. All right. Uh, you are forbidden to comment for four minutes. Ah! Punishment. <laughs> Boy, you're and, harsh. And you know what? For Mike, that's really tough. I'm just going to oh. say. Okay, so oh. Mike, four minute timeout. All right. All right. <laughs> Okay, let's let's. Yeah. What? Sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, you know, let's. I, I'm curious about the results of this survey, and you guys did such a good job with it too, putting it together, and then sort of, uh, you know, breaking down, boiling down all of the results. So, uh, no, uh, we didn't. But thank you very much for that. Um, <laughs> it was, you know, what it was. It was after I, I put the survey together that, that I uh, all all the mistakes started coming out that that you had done. Right? It's always tough to ask a survey because some of the questions are kind of open ended, or you don't realize they're open ended. But it, right. it is it is a chance to try and get people to think about what life is going to be like after isolation because we're going into a new world. Yeah. So I did a schmaltzy intro and I would appreciate it if people would just take the time to look at it. I think that's the last time we're going to use that. I think that's it. Uh, okay, so we're talking about your new world. We, we, I think we realize that now. We're not going back. It, it, it's like this is one of those. Do we call it a watershed moment? If we go, you know, pre nine nine eleven and and post nine eleven, we're going pre COVID and post COVID, and it is going to be my whoa, Mike Robin. Hold on, Mike Robin is commenting. <laughs> Hold on. No, it's not four minutes. No, it's not four, three, two, one. It is, it's only been, okay, four more minutes. What time is it? Seven, oh. six, seven, 18. You got, if you don't keep your viewers in check, no one will. Always remember that. Seven, wow. 722 before Mike is allowed back on. <laughs> 722. Now, Parker is in cahoots with him, obviously. So anyway, like we're saying, so I wanted to find out what people's feelings are right now because I guess I'm curious, maybe maybe a little bit of, a little bit anxious. But you know what? I've learned so much from guests, especially you know from you on the show, from any guests on the show. And we had what's Asante's last name? I keep forgetting. Hotton. Hotton that's right, Asante Hotton, who is a motivational speaker here in Toronto. He made me realize something because you know I, I do a lot of speaking as you do on depression and anxiety, and he gave me a word that I now say is the opposite of depression and the opposite of anxiety. And that word is hope. Right? right? It, mm -hmm. it, like, think about that. If, if, if you have anxiety, you don't have hope. If you have hope, you don't have anxiety. And so this is what I'm hoping will, people, sorry, I didn't mean to use that, but hoping that people will take from this survey is let's hope. So let's take a look at, at, at the question. I think we, we did four questions yesterday. So let's go to question number five which uh, is, how soon before you think you'll be willing to return to crowded events? Ah. Uh. 78% a while. And I, I, I you know, it, it is, you know, I think the, the correct answer should be the one that 17%, and that was after a few weeks of no new cases. However, you know what? I think the fact that people are hopeful and said, no, you know, it's going to be a while... It, it it says something, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that it, you know, if we, if we, you know, make haste slowly, as the old saying goes, there's a lot to being careful. Here on the island, as I said last 
right. There happened. There hasn't been a new case in a month. And I, you know, if Supertramp or uh, Roger Hodgson was coming to play at the Mary Winspear Center in Sydney, Super I Trump? might have to think about. Uh, you know, really, Aaron? Uh, that's, Roger that's, Hodgson. He, that's he where to, you he went. Is Supertramp? Supertramp, ELO, Paul McCartney. Okay, if if I if any of them, even Ringo, came to the Mary <laughs> Winspear Center this weekend, I would put on my mask and go. Okay, mm -hmm. but. Oh, I don't know. It'd have to be a pretty big deal. Yeah. I mean, we're going to see what happens uh, after Tulsa, obviously. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I mean, if nothing else, it's a good Petri dish for the rest Honestly. of the world to see, yeah. sadly. But yeah. Um, and then what are events going to look like? you know, from, from here on. And people are saying, oh, they're taking temperatures, things like that. Temperatures don't do anything. Temperatures just tell, tell you if you have COVID right now. And if you have COVID right now, you probably know you have COVID right now. But it's the asymptomatic people, 80% of people who carry it that don't have a temperature. So that's not going to help you. And they could be standing beside you at, at a concert. So yeah, it's going to be tough. I don't know. I really don't know what that's going to look like. Yeah, and Lynn makes a very good point, not unless there's a safe vaccine, and we may just have to bide our time. I mean, you look at the things, uh, the, the the sports franchises are champing at the bit to, to get back at oh, it. Oh, thank and you. I, no, keep, continue, continue. Sorry, I keep interrupting you, uh, making comments. That's okay, saying. that's no, what Champing at the bit to that's what? How, that's how conversations work. Yes, We're okay sorry, with that. Sorry, go ahead, um, go ahead. You know, to get things going again with Dunedin and then the Phillies just down the road, people testing positive players. And when you look, and I was reading Bob McCallum, of course, who came from Sportsnet Radio, the fan, um, he also was invited to spend more time with his family. Kevin, <laughs> you'll relate to that. Uh, but anyway, Bob today, um, he said that this is just nothing but greed. And you look at, he's got a friend who's 50, super fit, absolutely, um, uh, I can see your note, Mike, you can comment now. Um, <laughs> absolutely, the, the epitome of fitness, and he got COVID, and the doctors say he may never be back functioning fully. And I'm not telling this anecdotally yeah. to scare anybody. It's a story that McCowan told about a friend of his. So if you take an athlete in the prime of his life who gets taken down by COVID and then may not be full, fully functioning, that becomes a retired athlete. Will the owners please think of the investments they have, if nothing else, in these times? Mm -hmm. I don't oh, know. Most definitely. What I was yeah. going to say that I thanked you for was, was champing. champing. You know what? You know why people say chomping at the bit? Well, because of horses. But because it was a British word, I think. So champing would be chomping. Well, so I actually, think okay. Where... Let me tell you where it did okay, come from. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Etymologist. It did come from horses. If you, talk, if you talk to horse trainers, they will tell you when, when a horse bites at the bit, it's called champing. Right. So that's yes. where they're champing at the bit. And I presume, I guess, and then what you said about being British, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I bet you that's probably where it did come from. When a horse did that, it's probably, hey, champ, champing at the bit. Oh, you got no. Chomping, chomping at the bit. Yes, yes. bite. Same I, with khaki and khaki. Like I, I used to work a million years ago with Don Daynard, and he would say, it's khaki, it's khaki. And I was like, uh, it's khaki. But the thing is, khaki was probably something that came out of, I don't know, Rawalpindi or, in, or England or something where it was pronounced khaki. So anyway, go on. We've gotten so oh, no, far I, off I, here. I, GPS, Google Maps couldn't find us, Kevin. So <laughs> go on. Next question. Yes. Survey says, uh, in September, the new normal in schooling should include strict distancing and uh, mix in class and online, sort of got equal equal uh, votes. Back to normal, 15%. Um, I, I, and, and I know that people didn't really go for that one at all. Why does that not seem to add up? Oh, no, it does. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, and, and we're hearing, we heard in here in Ontario that the new school year in September, while they didn't come out with the definitive answer of what it's going to be, that they agree that, that classes are going to have to be, you know, much less. Is that, what's that, 98? I know, but there's a point stuff in there. I don't know. I don't. Do this. Oh, um, math. You, Kevin, you're pretty. Don't worry. That's right. Nothing upstairs, but what a staircase, huh? Um, <laughs> You've used that before, but I yes, want to know have. on whom. Who are you talking about? Because 
that we probably interviewed them too. Oh yeah. Anyway, yeah. It, it is uh, yeah. So they're saying that school, but we were already having problem with class sizes being way too big, and now they're saying classes cannot be more than fifteen people. How are we going to do that? I don't know. That's. And what's happening now isn't working. It may work for some people who are self-starters, university, college students, maybe some high school students, but the online schooling teachers have, have been telling me and parents, it's not working. Uh, it doesn't course. work. People, students need that structure and they need the one-on-one -on -one teacher time. And, uh, you know, if teachers ever had, to, had, ever had to wonder or wanted to show people that their jobs need to be secure, now is the time. We need absolutely you. Yeah. absolutely that's why teaching is a calling it's not just a job it's not a youtube video showing you how to fix a toaster these are the people that influenced our lives and made us who we are and and said something that that changed the way that we thought we were going to live our lives like in my case a, a college professor who i heard speak about radio I had never thought of radio as a, as a calling. And the teacher who laughed at theater arts class when I was doing a mime, a pantomime, and I thought, hmm, this could be something, making people laugh. So we all have that teacher moment in our lives, for better, sometimes for worse. What? Teachers are everything. What was a young Erin Davis going to be when she grew up? She had no idea. Radio wasn't a thing. I mean, I went to bed every night with the radio on. I would carry one around in my apron pocket when I was at my grandparents to listen to CKXL in Calgary. I was crazy about radio. But I mean, it was the 70s and there weren't a lot of women in radio. But at night when I listened to that radio, it was Barbara Frum and Mary Lou Finley on As It As Happens. As It Happens. So, yep. And the I would get Ugh. this 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 nervousness for them that they would dare ask these powerful men these pointed questions like I had no idea that was possible and uh yeah so it was grade 13 there that was a thing I know Parker's eyebrows just went up <laughs> um and I didn't know what I was going to do I knew I wanted to 13, but right I wanted Victory to be lap, a teacher yeah. I wanted to be a teacher but I wasn't a good enough student I couldn't do math or science or anything like that. So I knew that wasn't for me. I wanted to perform, but I knew I wasn't good enough to make it into that echelon to make a living at it uh, in terms of, you know, singing or theater or whatever. And then all of a sudden, uh, two speakers I signed up to hear speak were already booked by the time our school went to this careers day. And there I was listening to Brian Olney from Loyalist College in Belleville talking about the course. And it was like I was struck by lightning. Yeah. And there, yeah. Are, there that, are yeah, I have a, 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 a sort of a similar story, as, but it, but had no intention whatsoever. Uh, you know, I, I it was I was fourteen. I was in high school. And there was a club, and and it was uh, it was at cable TV in North Bay, cable twelve in North Bay. Eh, all right, sounds wow. like sounds like fun. And bam, it was like, uh, yeah. Mary Lou Finley and Barbara Frum were yeah. pioneers, and not yeah. just pioneers. They were really good at it. Um, Absolutely. But, yeah. They weren't the first woman at the sidelines no. in an NFL game or somebody who was just kind of put there. Uh, although no, no offense to the late Phyllis George. That's not what I mean. But, you know, they weren't just put there for window dressing. They, you know, backwards and in high heels, as Ginger Rogers famously said about dancing with Fred Astaire. It, it, they had to do it wow. twice as well in order to, they did. to be recognized. And they did. They did. And they, they, they set the bar, which is still there today at the same height. Oh. What is their t What did they pioneer in television? Do you remember the show they pioneered in television? Was it The National? Close. Or The Journal? The Journal. There you go. Yes. Which, was, yes. which was also revolutionary uh, for yeah. the day. And yeah. they did it brilliantly. And, and again, what they did then could stand up today. Absolutely. And Barbara Frum was by no means conventionally beautiful. She was, she was a handsome woman, I would say. But she wasn't the kind of woman. She wasn't Vanna White. Let's put it that way. And so for the CBC to take that step and say, you should be on camera, and for her to do it, I think was also was also a pioneering move. I have nothing but the greatest respect for her, uh, and her son David from who, of course, worked for the W administration in the U.S. Yeah. He's kind of coming around too. He is so anti-Trump. David's finally. I love the reading. Light. Yeah, I love reading him. Yeah, I, I <laughs> yeah, really yeah, do. Yeah, he's great. In okay. the Atlantic. You, you, yeah. you, This is you are the worst guest. Okay, you're I know, the worst I guest. Know. I just, 
I, I can't stay on topic with you. You know what? All of, know. all of my guests, you know what? I ask them a question, they answer it. Then I ask them another mm-hmm. question, they answer it. Oh, frustrating. But this was the best part of our radio show, too. <laughs> Cooper loved that we, we, never really had a, we never had a set show. It would just go where it went. And it was natural. It wasn't like, okay, now we're going to read yeah. a joke written by somebody, or now we're going to do this. Of course, we had, we had a, a, a guideline. We knew what time we had to be in the news and hit commercials and different features. But it was always the freewheeling. And and those are the parameters. And I think that worked in a lot of ways for you, too. You always had the guidelines. But whatever happened in terms of the natural flow of things, let it flow. That's life, right? Definitely. And if you laugh or cry or argue or, or you know, whatever. It's fun. There, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Sure. Because there was a different, there was a different, I don't want to say agenda, because there was really no, you know, it was just a different mentality of, of the executives then. And that was, if it works... It works. Let it happen. It is so... Now, I don't know about radio, but in television, it is so rigid now. And the people on there are not being allowed to do what it is they do best. And they've just become interchangeable light bulbs, I I call it, sadly. And so you lose that organic nature that you say that you and Mike would have and that Dina and I had for such a long, and we're allowed to have for such a long time until we weren't allowed anymore. So it is, yeah, it is something that's, what is radio like now? Is, Is it as rigidly controlled well, it depends on whom you work for. Julie Adam, who has just been bumped up to, like, I think, mm-hmm. senior vice president, radio, television. She she trusted her talent. And mm-hmm. I don't call myself talent. Julie, That's yeah. what they yeah. call us. Yeah. <laughs> and she she would be your boss boss now, I think. But um, she trusted her talent. She believed in her talent. And she would go to the wall for her talent. I mean, I worked for some, you know, they would get one phone call or email and then they would come to you and tell you that you shouldn't do that anymore or that somebody said this rather than have the cojones to say, I don't think that that was right or you guys should do this a little differently. They would say, well, a listener said you need someone who is daring, but who believes in you. And when you talk about, you know, taking away that possible spontaneity, I think that's a loss of trust in the talent. You were hired to do a job. If I'm not doing it the way you want Mm -hmm. me to do it, find somebody else but uh, I've got nothing but kudos for for you know for Julie and for for the the people who hire the talent tell them what they want and then get out of the yeah. way because you're supposed to be professionals at this level doesn't mean that you can't be corrected or corralled or directed but you know you got racehorse got to run as Dr. Yeah. Phil would say it, it, you know and and Julie if if you're listening I don't mean this the wrong way but she's from the old guard right and Julie, and please don't, 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 I don't, but she, she represents that time when broadcasting was about originality and, and, right. and was about fun and, and creativity and never knowing what's going to come next. Yes. You know, it, it was sad that one day I was told by someone who came in and was the, the new guard was that Kevin, we pay you to be an on-air talent, come in, do that and go home. And wow. that was my indication that that was the direction things were, were going, sadly. And I, I don't want to digress into, into that. And, and, and it's only a very few people who, who make it that way. But it's all about the dollar now. Oh, God, yes. It's all about oh, the dollar. Oh, yes, 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 it is. Um, and, and that's what's so sad about seeing shows being syndicated across the country where there used to be live morning shows and that sort of thing. Radio, if it dies, will have killed itself. It's survived over a century. But again, if you've got the people who believe in the talent and, and how important local is, I mean, it's it's so important that you've got a voice of what's happening right now. And that was no more obvious than during COVID and during the protests and things that are happening outside your window. Well, you know, um, what's his name? Who has all the jobs? Um, New Year's Eve. Oh, uh, 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 Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And Ryan Seacrest doing a morning show is not going to tell you what's happening with the statue that's being torn down. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about it, as you are, because it was our passion. And when someone comes in and tells you to be an automaton, mm-hmm. then, you know, just you go, go find another mannequin. But that's, that's the new way, right? That's, that's just so there. You know what? We just, we do. You did it again. Can we please go to the next survey question? 
Hey, hey, so. <laughs> All right, what's the next, what, what's, what's our next one? Okay, after isolation, I will wear a at all times for some time. Who spelled that? Okay, I, I forgot a is word. It, is it a mask? Yes, a correct. That was, I that, will wear a mask. That was actually, um, <laughs> I think it's a bra. You that was, about a that bra. was actually the survey question. Yeah. Okay, yes, after isolation, I will wear a bra at all times. All right. For some time. And now, so we're, obviously we're saying mask. 54% uh, said, yes, I will wear it at all times for some time. Eight, only 8% 8 said no. Wow, my viewers are intelligent, or at least people who answer this are intelligent. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's, and only when required. That's all right. Look at that. Yay, you don't even notice. It is. You don't even notice that that's there. That's perfect. <laughs> um, Nicely done, Parker. <laughs> I, you know, 54% and 39%, you know, and, and essentially it's a 54 and the 39 together, which, which add up to a heck of a lot, right? 39, okay, yeah. Alexa, yeah, what is 54 nice. plus 39? Oops, sorry, hold on. I just probably pushed that button there. Alexa, what is 54 plus 39? I think it's 93. 93. Alexa, what is 54 plus 39? This is painful. No, this is faster. What, oh what's really? Going on with Alexa's not answering me. Oh my God, Kevin. Never mind. What was it? Jeez. What was it ninety three? Ninety three. Okay. Uh, all right. Math, math, uh, it, math, no good for me. Right. <laughs> math, yeah. no good. I was not. I'm, <laughs> I'm terrible at math. Okay. Uh, next, next survey question. And this is a, 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 how you feel on a scale of 1 to 10 on, on this next question. And that is, isolation has made this a better world. We've realized what is important and better prepared for the future. Do you strongly disagree or strongly agree? 6%, so almost down the middle. Or yeah. 6%, sorry, 6.1 out of 10. So That's I, like 60, 61%, Kevin. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Do not mock my math. My math affying skills is. Gosh. Um, yeah. So, it, you know, I was hoping for a better answer. Uh, however, you can see there are some circumstances that have been happening that might make might sway you to say no. It is not a better world. Hmm. Well, I guess that depends a lot on your personal circumstances too. If you're heading out looking for a job or your world is going to include going on the TTC and you don't know that the rest of the riders have washed their hands and taken the, the precautions, there's probably a lot of the fear factor in there, don't you think? Definitely, but you know that I'm thinking about all the groups that popped up and the people who, who done good. Um, I, I, you know, today I interviewed someone for my Thursday show from the Good Neighbor Project, these wonderful, wonderful people out in Peel Region uh, who have just, They've, they've, they've acquired a, a, a team of like two, 3,000 people who go and deliver things to people for free. Um, and so people like that have come up. And that, I guess that's where I'm sort of looking, okay, I'm looking into some of the little corners that it is a better world in some cases. Um, I, I just, I, I hate to see anything like this happen without saying, okay, let, let's, let's at least learn something from this. Yeah, yeah. God bless your optimism, Kevin Frankish. <laughs> uh, no, really, and I'm not ridiculing you. I think that you are definitely a glass half full person. Um, uh, and I guess it's, I guess it's a healthy thing. I, I tend to take on other people's concerns and problems. Um, and that's, that's not a martyr thing. But it's just, it's so worrisome for so many. But you, you know, <sighs> it, it is, um, it's tough to turn to turn towards that. It, it it's tough to turn turn uh, towards that. Uh, the the what are you doing? They, they, nobody at home can see what's happening except you and me, Aaron. And that is uh, Parker was doing some computer stuff that had to be done uh, on there, and okay. so we couldn't see each other. So that that was what was That's happening. That's all right. He's trying to fix a problem that I don't even know exists. What's what's the problem? It's my hair. My hair is the problem. I'm getting it cut oh, tomorrow. Oh, I look like a shaggy dog. Honest no, to God, you don't. But you look beautiful. That's not a big problem. So maybe if I if maybe if I take my glasses off, it'll distract people from my hair. There we go. Okay, he, he was trying to get the comments to to go back into white text. They they went to black text. Oh, I love these comments, by the way. Thank you, Lynn. Love you guys. It's a real pick me up. Um, uh, I hope that it all continues, Tammy. Put, it's a wonder how put, Kevin stays so positive. Yeah, what look do you at, want? Look at Florence's comment. Aaron, you, Aaron are you are a helper. helper. Uh, flow from Buffalo. Love flow from flow. Buffalo. But, but Aaron, you are a helper. And that's why I started writing the journal five days a week. Is 
you know, I, I, I wanted to be on the radio. I wanted to be helping in any way that I could, and I couldn't. And it's like you, you're doing this thing to try and help. And uh, What did Fred know. Rogers' mother say to him? She said, look for the helpers. Look for the helpers. That's in right. times that are bad, look for the helpers. And you're definitely a helper. I've watched you. I've oh. witnessed it. And, and people turn to you for, for that help, and you're there. So, you know, it, it's going to be glass half full, glass, and being a helper. There you go. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an honor to, that anybody even cares, you know, to, <laughs> to, hear what, to hear what we might have to say to make things a little better if we can. But how does this not sound like, well, we're here to help. Isn't that true? But, you know what I mean? Yeah, gosh. Isn't that true? Just between you and me, Aaron, and, and yes. you know, I don't want the viewers to hear this. Yes. I can't believe people actually paid us just to talk because that's all we did. We didn't do anything else. We just I know. talked and we I got know. away with it for how many years? Many. And as, as I said, Rob would say to me, you know, if anyone ever learns how to tell the time themselves, you're out of the job. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, it's, it reminds me a bit of an old joke that I, I can't tell the entire thing, but I can tell you the punchline. It's okay. like, yeah, but as soon as it, as soon as it, uh, it no, I'll it, try, I'll try and fill in the PC version. Go ahead. I don't know if you're going to be able to, but as soon as it learns to cook, you're out of here. Oh gosh. Okay, never mind. There are a few people who are laughing, and anybody who's laughing, shame on you for knowing that joke. <laughs> shame on you. Now, here's another. Here's another. <laughs> <laughs> Daynard had the idea a hundred years ago to uh, just do the punchlines for jokes because he figured yeah, all the jokes had already yeah. been told. Yeah, so, so? Uh, you want to hear what our daughter's favorite joke was? And she learned this when she was a kid. Okay. Okay, I'm going to tell you this joke. And it's clean. Okay. okay, so this guy walks into a bar. He sits down and he hears this voice. Don't, don't tell it because I know you know it, Frankish. And he sits down and he hears, nice tie. And he looks around. Rob's laughing. He looks around and there's nobody there. So he continues to drink his drink. And then he hears, ooh, nice shirt. And he, he's looking around. There is nobody there except the bartender. And he's way back there, you know, cleaning glasses like an old bar time, an old timey bartender. And then he hears, oh, nice hair. And he goes, that's it, that's it. He slams his drink down on the bar and he says, bartender, bartender. He says, I keep hearing these voices, you know, nice, nice shirt, nice, nice uh, tie, Hi. nice hair. And uh, uh, am I going crazy? Where's this voice come from? And the bartender goes, eh, it's the peanuts. They're complimentary. You see, that's a pun. <laughs> complimentary means I free. Know. But it also means tells us, tells a compliment. So you she see? loved that. But did you see? Because it was. But, but so did you fun. see the comedic effect that I gave there? Well, oh, no, I because was looking it, at it, the no, camera it, lens. It was more what like, did you do? it was more like, mm hmm, go on. Yes. Yes, you see, that's, yeah. So. Comedy. Yes. There you know Timing. <laughs> it, 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 is, it is great. And there's a few the guy walks into a bar stories again that I can't tell. I know. Sorry. No, I, know. I, 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 just, I just can't. Uh, okay. Are we done the survey No. Yet? One more question. Because uh, our survey says that we're taking too long with the survey. <laughs> one more question. Okay. 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 Um, if there is a second wave, how willing will you be to repeating isolation? This is much higher and strongly willing seems to be coming out. And that is good. It's, it would be tough and it will be tough. But we, if, if we mentally prepare ourselves now, that's pretty important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, you know what? We're going to have to do what we have to do. Our ancestors, our, 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 you know, our grandparents went to war. All we were asked to do was stay home with Netflix and snacks. And I, I simplify, and, I, and I'm sure that's offensive to some people who say, no, this was not that easy. But for mm -hmm. a great many people, that's all we were asked to do. And, you know, everybody out there screaming that they need a haircut. Yeah, I need a haircut, too, but I wasn't going to break quarantine for it or, or protest with, a, with a, an assault rifle to, to make my point. You know, it's time that a very – I think we've become a very selfish and, and self-involved society, and – COVID has kind of opened our eyes to the needs of our neighbors, the concerns, the, the, the frailties of our neighbors and how we can help them simply by wearing a mask or doing what we're told. But for some people, that's just too big an ask. I, I don't understand it. I, I, wanted, I want to share this uh, that you tweeted today. Uh, hold on. Hold on one second. I think you probably remember the picture.
you uh you tweeted hold on oh gosh yeah, yeah. You got it there? <laughs> okay so uh here, here you go oh the audio input changed oh no hold on. here we go one second Okay, there we go. So there you go. Expectation, and you see the tan lines, yeah. uh, and and then you see the tan, the real tan lines the of the mask. Isn't I like that. that. Right? I That's like that. Right. Yeah, yeah. And bless you, Ethel Richardson. You say you worked every day. Bless you, because you were doing something important, or you wouldn't have been out there. So um, everybody who was, you know, everyone. Uh, who, who kept the world turning while we were all stuck inside or not stuck inside, but safe inside. Um, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Mm, most definitely. Most definitely. I was, I was just thinking about jokes in the punchline and Mike Robin always, Mike Robbins, not, not, not that, sorry, I, I didn't mean to just sort of like completely go to the next topic. Um, Mike Robin uh, in Cochran always has good jokes. I'm going to call him. Oh, geez. I was waiting for my dad to call during this. Um, oh, hold on. Mike, call me. Call me. Mike, if you're there, call, call me. I've, I've got every piece of information for him except for... Can we put that on there? What's that? What do you need? God, he's calling a friend. This interview is going so badly, he's calling for help. Oh, we need help. Wow. But I just think, you know what? If you want groaners, this, this mm -hmm. is what it is. So Mike's going to call. Okay. Uh, and 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 he better have a joke prepared. And so it oh just. Oh my gosh. And, and again, these are things that I didn't tell Parker. So right now he's busy hooking up the phone to the the audio. Poor board. Parker. Poor Parker. Yes, poor Parker. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What What are you doing for Father's Day tomorrow, Kevin? This. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's Yay. you know what? I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm you happy with are it. Good. It's your calling. And, and you know, I'm teasing you, but you mean a lot to a lot of people. Oh, so stop. You were saying something about 100 shows and, and then you're going to do what? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I am going to um, think about it. I never really thought beyond the 100 shows. Right. That's good right. planning. Yeah, yeah, well, I like alliteration. It could be Frankish Fridays. Yes. Or, um, I don't know. But do people, I mean, Bill Maher is on on Friday night, so you might be competing with that. Although he's on later in Ontario. Yeah, isn't he? yeah. So okay. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I'm still waiting. Mike, come on. Why, why is Mike not calling? That's okay. You know what? Maybe he has a life. No, I know, Mike. He doesn't have one. Oh, okay. I'm pretty, I'm right. pretty sure. I can say, oh, okay. here he is. Okay, here it is. All right. Hold on. Now, do I have to press anything here? All right. Uh, wow. Oh, no, hold this on. is pretty cool. Mike, Mike, are you, you're on the air. Hey, everybody. <laughs> how you doing? Can you hear him? Big yeah, I can. Hi, Mike. Hi, Aaron. Great to hear from you. Thank you. I'm sorry you were put on a timeout, but I hope that, uh, you know, we've all learned from this. I think he's learned his lesson. So uh, I think, uh, yes, yes, uh, yes, I did. Why, yeah, were you, I did why were you late, Mike? I was late because I was uh, actually in my little uh, group of 10 over at uh, my mother's house. Oh, so, okay. Uh, oh. There was me, there was uh, the couple of dogs, and there was my older brother who came up all the way from Simcoe, Ontario. And, uh, yeah, we were all just kind of sitting in the backyard. And I, I saw the clock hit 7, but, you know, the goodbyes take a little while. And I, I scooted way across town all nine blocks and uh <laughs> <laughs> it's it's rush hour in cochran so it took him a, it took a little while um yeah, yeah so mike uh you always are good for a, for a, a groaner oh okay so you're looking for like a, a a groaner to kind of top things off for show 92 is it yes okay what's the best thing about switzerland the what? cheese the chocolate the best thing about Switzerland. Let me see. Uh, they're neutral. Uh, the best thing about Swiss, Swiss Miss. Um, best thing about Yodel Leahy, who uh, Yodel. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're 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 not joke writers, obviously. We, we're just going for the yeah. serious stuff. Okay. What is the best thing about Switzerland, Mike? You know what? I really don't know, but I'll tell you one thing. Their flag's a big plus. <laughs> oh, oh, the flag oh. is a big oh. plus. Tip the waitress. Try the meal. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. <laughs> okay. All Their right. flag is the Bye, -bye. Big Bye Mike. Plus.
Mike is faint, someone said. So his question was, what's the best part about Switzerland? And he said, I don't really know, but their flag's a big plus. So <laughs> there you go. Yes, because it's Swiss. Well, here, let's, uh, you know what? Let me, I'll, I'll just in case, just in case, uh, Swiss flag, just okay. in case. By the way, Wayne what? Bray says, don't stop doing it or it'll fall apart. Well, Wayne, oh, look at you. So there's look the Swiss flag. All right. right. Um, and, what do you say to people, Kevin, who, who feel that if you don't do it every day, it won't keep going? Because I can tell you that when I pulled back from my journal five days a week at AaronDavis.com, I had major qualms about it because I thought, well, they won't come. But you know what? The people who want to be there will come. They'll remember that it's Monday and Thursday. And you know what? I, I have faith. I have faith. And you know what? We have these devices now. We can put them in our calendar and it'll repeat. And people will say, hey, mm -hmm. Kevin's on at seven tonight. You know? Oh, thank you. What thank you for that. Partner. What about you and me doing a show? That's what everybody's commenting on, by the way. Aren't I keep they, hearing though? that. Yes. Aren't they? Wow. You know, I like, I'm going to say no to you when we're doing a show live. This is huge fun. I won't lie. Um, and, and I would really like to. I don't know. I'd like to monetize this. Is that wrong? I'd like to no, make some money for no, my because, retirement. No, because do you know what? I yeah, and, and I've made no bones about you that. Know. I'm saying that once I'm done, I do I need do need to find a job. Yes. However, if I could do this as a job, and again, people and as long as people don't realize it's not really a job. It uh, is a job. Well, you committed to this. I've been thinking about it all day, knowing okay, four o'clock, I gotta be with Kevin, I gotta back time my day and that sort of thing. So how many people watch this every night, Kevin? I'm curious. It it goes from about like like in a normal night we have about a thousand to fifteen hundred watching live. Oh. And then then the rebroadcast but by the time all is said and done, it goes anywhere between three to five thousand. So hmm. if everybody sent me a thousand dollars. All right, so everybody watching right now, send me $1,000. This is all your telethon training coming in, you see? <laughs> oh, it was so sad this year we could not do the Easter Seals telethon. Aww. Well, now I'm going to be doing a fundraiser for Matthew's House Hospice, which you took part with me. You were fantastic last year, but we're going to be doing it virtually in September. Okay. It's Crazy. And and I and I have no you know what? I'm not I know I'm not putting you on the spot here by asking you this on the I know air. you're not. I know. But, but there's but the thing no, about no, the billing I'm, too. I mean I worked so hard to get it to be Aaron and Mike after all those years of Don and Aaron and Bob and Aaron and Mike and Aaron and then Aaron and Mike. No, I'm kidding about all I, this. People are gonna think, <laughs> look at the ego on her. She wants money, she wants top she billing did. on Kevin's show. Never. Well never, no, never, it, never. It, but um uh I wanna ask you, because yeah. Easter Seals has been in touch with me that they want to do um a uh a virtual telethon as well. Do it. So um would you be willing to, to share a couple of minutes? As in well? a heartbeat. Are you kidding me? I love Easter Seals and my heart goes out to all of those kids who just oh they oh, they look so okay. much forward Aaron, to camp. You, you keep talking yes. you keep talking. Ah! Okay, the kid's help phone number is up. All right, what happened to Kevin? Oh my goodness. Is it, did they finally come to take him away? All right, I hope that everybody's okay. Aw, Michael Bentley, thank you. Sierra still would be happy to contribute to that silent auction. Okay, Kevin's back. Kevin, what happened? Where, oh, no, I'm looking at another screen. So I'm just gonna keep talking. Ah, oh, look at you, you my, quick change artist. You had me worried. I thought you went and found another co-host. <laughs> You're the uh, only one, business. Aaron. That other one didn't. Right. Dina didn't mean anything to me. Oh, Dina. No, I mean, Imagine Dina, I'm only kidding. At that Aaron, face Aaron doesn't mean a thing to me, Dina. No, I know. <laughs> I, look at, I would choose Dina over me. Rob <laughs> would choose Dina over me. Are you kidding? I would switch lanes for oh, Dina Pugliese. A... She is just, she's everything. She's funny. She's gorgeous. She's talented. And, she's. And I'm not speaking out of school here because I've told Dina this many, many times. Every once in a while, she'd get someone who, who would be emailing her or, or tweeting her saying, oh, you're so stuck up, things, things like that. And, and, and I, I told her, I said, you know what the problem is? You're too gorgeous. And That's it. You, you, you look, you know, anybody who, who if, if you're thinking about a stereotypical gorgeous woman, I'm not saying gorgeous women are stuck up. I'm just saying if you were being stereotypical, you know, you would think that she would be stuck up. She is not. Dina is exactly the oh, yeah. same way off the air that she is 
on the air. And that's yeah. irritating. <laughs> so, because she will pun you to death, but no. Oh, yes. She and I are a lot alike in that way. Puns and breaking into song for no apparent reason. And for being, the same, and for being the same off air as you are on air. If anybody oh, ever wondered goodness. about Erin. Oh, well, thank you. She's, oh. anyway, I'm sorry. I'm gushing over Dina. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't? Who yeah, wouldn't? I know, I she... know. Yeah, and all those Easter Seals kids. I see your t-shirt, Kevin, and it's just so heartbreaking. And of course, Tim Horton's Camp Day. How many years did we do those, mm. hey? Yeah. Wow, yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. COVID. <laughs> anyway. Um, all right. Are we done with the survey? I, I think we are, finally. <laughs> I don't know if everybody even noticed we talk about the survey. We did seven out of ten questions, which in <laughs> Kevin's math is 80%. <laughs> exactly. So. Hey. Hey, I, Rob, I think I might be doing this regularly with Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. <laughs> One less hour of errands. Well, I'll let you know yeah. if everybody is giving me $1,000 per. Oh, my gosh. Back. Yeah. Dream big, right, baby? <laughs> Well, Kevin, I want to wish you a very happy Father's Day and congratulations on your collaboration with Parker. I know that Stephen Colbert does it with his son, his late show from home. And uh, it's, you know, it's it's just a wonderful thing to see a father and son working together like this. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's it, great. It, it really, really is. Wish, ha wish Rob a happy Father's Day for me as well and a happy Grandfather's Day to him. Yes. And you yes, were supposed yes, to recap yes. because I'm, I'm sure some people didn't hear yesterday and you, you had alluded to it at the beginning of the show about your, yes. your news. At... You see how I teased so people mm -hmm. would stay to the end? Yeah, well, I I'm think many from... have. Uh, yeah, well, anyway, our big, big news that I let spill yesterday because I was going to wait till my journal Monday is that in the past week, it has become confirmed that um, our son-in-law, Phil, and his wife, Brooke, and our grandson, Colin, and his new baby sister, Jane, who will be nine months on the 30th of this month, so our granddaughter as well, and our daughter-in-law, Brooke, they're all moving to within a six-minute drive of us at the end of July. And it's, we're just absolutely, my mind has been completely mm -hmm. spinning like a like a like my Vitamix um, for the last week or so because it's all happened so fast and there's a lot of transactions that have got to happen in this and long distance and stuff so Brooke and Phil are up to their eyeballs in stress right now and so are we but this has been it's just the best news in the whole world we're going to have our grandson right with us and that's we couldn't great. be happier I'm so yeah. happy for you I think that's Thank wonderful um, we need to do this again even if I don't have a show uh, we need to find some reason to go on and talk with people because I think you you and me are cut from the same cloth and have the same DNA and that is for us this isn't work for us being able to to talk to hundreds, thousands of people can be just as intimate as, as, a, as a room of 50 people or five people, whatever. And, and I enjoy it. Uh, and I know you do as well to talk to, uh, to all of these great people. And that's, you know, it is a difference between television and radio, but I think that you probably got that very early on. And that is with radio, you talk to one person. Yeah. You talk to that person who's brushing their teeth or driving to school or having an awful day or having a great day. And it's not, hey, good morning, everybody, which of course television you do because you know you've got a million and six viewers. Radio, it was just good morning. How are, mm -hmm. you? How are you? Just talking to that one person. Yeah. And um, that's a connection that that has held me in such good stead because I feel connected and I'm just so grateful. And I'm grateful to you, my friend, and to everyone, Nancy and Kelly and Rose and Mike. You're related, Mike says. Oh, hell no, Mike. <laughs> no. Um, and Meredith and Dorothy, all of these wonderful, wonderful folks. Um, it Thank is you. Indigenous Peoples Day tomorrow. Uh, Mike reminded me, yes, so I don't. Yes. I don't have a plan for the show tomorrow. So if anybody wants to send me suggestions, Kevin's uh, Kevin's isolators at gmail dot com. Thank you. Uh, send me some suggestions. What can I do for Indigenous Persons Day tomorrow? Um, I would love to. So send me some suggestions. And I, and again, the the theme of the show is positivity. Okay, this is not about complaining or about it, this is about positivity. So what what do you think I could do? Kevin's isolators at gmail dot com. Aaron. I love you. Thank you, I love you so Kevin. much. And thank you. Do you think you can sign off today? Um, okay. So, and before we go, remember, let's take care of each other. No, 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 no let's no, take care of ourselves. Oh. Hold on. Hold on one second. Um,
I'm so stupid in person. Yeah. Uh, do you remember those those sound effects from radio? Every every how many? I'm sh- just just things every once in a while these these sound effects would come up. You always had yeah. that board full of them. Okay. Start with taking care of yourself because that's let's the first thing you have to do. Take care of ourselves and let's take care of each other. Mwah. Good night, Aaron. Miigwech. Don't forget to say miigwech tomorrow. Miigwech. COVID-19, why you do this to me? I really don't like being stuck in quarantine. I have no toilet paper, I don't even...